بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وآله الطاهرين Dear and respected brothers and sisters Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome to Imam Hussain Online Seminary In this episode we are going to explain Taqlid One of the very significant and important principle in Islamic jurisprudence. When it comes to taqlid, we have to explain first of all the meaning of taqlid. That what does taqlid mean? When it comes to its literally meaning, we have to say that taqlid means following. If you follow someone or imitate someone, it is called taqlid. So, but taqlid has a technical meaning in fiqh, in jurisprudence. That is why what we mean here in this class is this technical meaning or jurisprudential meaning of taqlid. Taqlid technically means following a marja's rulings on Islamic laws. We will explain inshallah in the next episode the term marja or this title in Islamic jurisprudence. Taqlid or following emerger's rulings is important like praying and fasting, which means as praying and fasting is wajib and obligatory in Islam, taqlid itself is also wajib and obligatory. But of course, uh, taqlid is wajib based on certain conditions that will be inshallah explained in the next episode. So now that you learn the literal and technical meanings of taqlid, let's explain the necessity of taqlid in Islamic jurisprudence. A very important question may arise here in our mind that why should we perform taqlid in our Islamic rulings? To answer this question, we should refer to the Holy Quran, to Ahadith, sayings of the Ahl al-Bayt, the 14 Masumin alayhim salatu was salam, and reason or aql. These are the three main reasons based on which we have to perform taqlid in our lives. In the Holy Quran, it is mentioned in this ayah of the Holy Quran that A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim Fas'alu Ahl al-Dhikri in kuntum la ta'lamun it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us to ask Ahl al-Dhikr, the people of reminding, the people who knows, the people who are knowledgeable. Ahl al-Dhikri in kuntum la ta'lamun. If you do not know something, you have to ask about those things from those people who know, who are knowledgeable people who are experts, professional scholars. And of course, there are some other verses of the Holy Quran from which we can understand the necessity of taqlid. Secondly, we have to refer to hadith, to the sayings of the 14 infallibles, Ma'asumin alayhim salatu was salam. As it was mentioned in the Holy Quran that we have to ask Ahl al-Dhikr, the scholars, the ulama, in one of the sayings of Imam Al-Mahdi Ajalallahu Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif, it is mentioned that Farjiu fiha ila ruwati hadithina. Of course, the complete version of hadith is this that Wa al Hawadith al Waqi'a Farjiu fiha ila ruwati hadithina fa innahum hujjati alaykum wa ana hujjatullahi alaykum. So this is the complete a uh, version of the hadith that you can refer to our traditional sources and find this hadith. So this phrase of hadith means that 
Imam al-Mahdi al-Sharif orders us that in the time of ghaybah, in the time of the major occultation that nowadays we live, we have to refer to ruwati hadithina, to ruwati hadith ahl bayt to the people who write or who narrate a hadith of Ahl al-Bayt alayhim salatu wassalam. So according to this hadith, we have to refer to those people who are the narrators or the transmitters of a hadith, sayings of the Ahl al-Bayt alayhim salatu wassalam, which means the scholars, the ulama, who are the narrators and the writers of a hadith. And of course, there might be different people who claim that they are the narrators of a hadith, but in Shia school, it is said that we have to refer to those professional and expert scholars who can narrate the true hadith, who can understand the authentic sources and the authentic sayings of the Ahl al-Bayt, and based on those hadith, they actually issue their fatwas. Thirdly, the reason an aql tells us that whenever you do not understand something, whenever you are not capable of solving a problem or answering a question, you have to refer to some experts and professionals who can help you to answer your question, to find, your, uh, to find a solution to your own problem. So that's why when it comes to ankle and reason, it is completely rational and reasonable to refer to the experts, to the professionals in Islamic laws, because we might not be able to gain the knowledge of Islamic laws in our lives. So that's why for us, it is completely rational and logical to refer to ulama, to these scholars. As you, for example, refer to a math teacher if you want to learn math or for example if you need a doctor you refer to a doctor or if you need for example to an engineer you refer to an engineer because you might not be neither a teacher of math nor for example a doctor nor an engineer nor for example a scholar who knows the Islamic laws so to sum up taqlid means following a marja's rulings on Islamic laws and there are three main reasons for uh, the necessity of taqlid, which is this verse of the Holy Quran that was mentioned, and a hadith, and finally the reason and aql. So the third important point about taqlid that we must learn is the age of taqlid. The question is that when should we start performing taqlid? The age of taqlid Dear brothers and sisters, is exactly the age of puberty or the age of buluh. But you must know that for boys and girls, according to the Islamic Sharia laws, we have different ages of puberty. So for boys, when they complete 15 years, according to the lunar calendar, or 15 qamari years, they have to perform taqlid. But sometimes there are some exceptional cases in which the boys might see some other signs of puberty and blue before this age. In those cases, they have to perform taqlid before this age. And those conditions and signs of blue and puberty will be inshallah explained in another video. For girls, when they complete nine years, according to the lunar calendar or nine years of Qamari, they have to perform taqlid. The same as boys, there are some other conditions or exceptional cases according to different scholars and ulamas. There are some different conditions that will be inshallah explained in another video. Now let's see the fourth important point about taqlid, which is the areas of taqlid. By the areas of taqlid, we mean this that on what kind of things areas or rulings or issues, we must perform taqlid. When it comes to the areas of taqlid, we must know that first of all on usul al-deen that we explained in the series of videos, and alhamdulillah you've watched those videos, 
and now you are familiar with those usul al-din in those usul al-din there is no taqlid so we do not do taqlid on usul al-din like the main islamic principles like tawhid adala nabuwa imama and qiyama those principles must be understood and believed in rationally and logically and according to our reasons and intellects. So, you don't have to follow a marja'i taqlid in usul din No, there's no need. You have to understand those usul din and accept them and follow them logically and rationally. Secondly, there are some necessary Islamic rulings like the compulsion of prayers and fasting. You know, these kind of rulings are very much clear and obvious and there is no doubt about them so that's why in this kind of rulings there is no need to do taqlid so there is no taqlid in the necessary Islamic rulings but in the rest of the Islamic rulings or the other Islamic rulings in our daily life it is necessary and wajib to do taqlid like this like the quality of performing prayer. How should we perform prayer? How should we do fasting? How should, what are some of the halal, the permissible things? And what are some of the haram things? These kind of things, which are, as compared to these kind of rulings, can be termed as secondary issues, or even we can say unnecessary kind of rulings. So in these kind of rulings, we have to do taqlid. And here, it is wajib to perform taqlid. For example, like economical issues, there are certain things that we do not know whether to buy them, sell them or not. Is that permissible for me or not? So in this kind of things, we have to refer to the scholars, to maraja, to understand the true rulings and ahkam of Islam. So taqlid is necessary and wajib in this area. To sum up, Age of taqlid is exactly the age of puberty, but of course for boys and girls we have different ages. For boys it is the completion of 15 years, and for girls completion of 9 years. And when it comes to the areas of taqlid, in usul al-din, in necessary Islamic rulings, there is no taqlid. In the rest and the other issues and the other Islamic rulings, we have to do taqlid and refer to marjas fatwa or hukum and rulings. So respected brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah today uh, you learned taqlid, its meaning and the necessity of taqlid and also the age and the areas of taqlid. In the next episode we are going to inshallah explain that who a marja is, what do we mean by marja, what are some of the conditions for marja a taqlid. So inshallah stay with us in Imam Hussain online seminary. Wa akhiru da'wana أن الحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته اللهم صلي وسلم وزد وبارك على رسول الله وآله الأطهار